I'm really excited for today's video. We're going to be tackling some of the biggest brands on the internet and exploring how their websites are constructed. We're going to be speculating the designer's mind at each point of the way. And also we'll be using the Wayback Machine, a wonderful archive tool that allows us to look at previous iterations of the same website. I've not tested this process yet in this format, so anything could go wrong. If you follow the Pixel Haze channel regularly, you may have seen a recent YouTube short, which is a teaser for the new but old Burger King rebrand. Whilst Burger King have gone back to the future with their retro looking brand, we're gonna go forward to the past with this website deep dive. I think that's enough of an introduction and I really can't wait to press ahead with this episode. Let's crack on. As I said, I'm really excited about this, so let's just jump straight in. What we're gonna be doing today is looking at the Burger King website, the new version, which incorporates the new brand. And there's a really strong tie in here between the brand and the website itself. We're also gonna be using the Wayback Machine, as mentioned, to look at a previous iteration. And this is back in 2019, so not too far back into the past. Already we can see that there are things like the brand here is fighting a little bit with the content. You could already see at this stage that there was a desire to take the website in a new direction. And both versions are burgerking.co.uk, so the UK version. If I was to be ultra critical of this site, although they've got beautiful photography and impactful messages, there seems to be a lot fighting against itself. We can say that it's a professionally designed site, but it doesn't quite have clarity. We've got a number of hero units, advertisement sections here, although these are very narrow. We've got the Find a Restaurant, which has got a map where the colors just don't tie in. So maybe the design choice could be made to adapt the colors to tie in with the warmer theme that we have through the site. Maybe that was a legal reason why they couldn't do that. We've got this hero slider unit here. Now, the one thing with hero units is we're trying to get that one message across in seconds. So we've got about three seconds for that message to sync in. And although we have the option to control the sliders, and I'm interested now, will it auto jump on? Now I've clicked on one, it does. So. For me, the moment we interact with these sliders, we want it to fix on a design as opposed to keep sliding between because I find this, it gives me a bit of a headache when I have to do a lot more work. Although the slider adds energy and dynamism, it can just make it very busy, especially when we've got an animation on one of the slides as shown there. Also having multiple heroes will increase the load time of the page. Now, if someone goes to the Burger King website, they're probably after some information. So therefore, they've probably got more patience than if you went to an unknown brand. If you have an up and coming business, you're a startup, micro business, you don't really have the luxury that a worldwide established brand like Burger King has, where people will have more patience on your website. They're going to have next to no patience. So therefore, we need to get the message across as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And when we've got multiple sliders here, that's much harder to do. We've then got a call to action or a number of call to actions. All leading off to different locations. We've got the Instagram call to action button here. The next call to action is to find a restaurant, as we've already covered. And then we've got two additional signposting options there. We've got the signposting, but I just feel this is a little messy, although you can appreciate the quality of the design. I really do like this really chunky, simple, bold menu system. I don't do this enough with my sites. We tend to go more corporate, and I really should try and implement some of this type of look into certain sites where that style would suit. But overall, we can see the first reasons why Burger King went down the route of rebranding is because there's a little bit of a culture clash here between the brand, which feels very early 2000s, late 90s. Be interesting to see actually when this version of the logo was created, but it has that late 90s, early 2000s web 2.0 vibe to it. Strong, bold primary colors. It's probably been adapted a little bit as well for a flat design, so we can't see any gradients here. It's really simple. Maybe you could argue that it's lost a little bit of the personality. Maybe that's been a bit harsh. If we jump to the latest version of the Burger King website, we can see there's a much stronger connection between the styling of the website and the rebrand for Burger King. And if we scroll down here, we can see that carrying through. We've even got little details here, like that line there not being perfectly straight, although there is a little bit of a color mixed up there. I'm not sure if it comes across on your screen, but the footer color is actually a different shade of brown to the line above. It's been fussy, but with an organization inside the Burger King, you'd expect them to get that right. 
Before jumping into the next steps, I thought I'd share with you Hostinger and its wonderful hosting plans. We've got the pricing table here, and even the business plan works out at £3.49 per month. And you might think that's just for one website, but that's up to 100 websites per account. From someone who's come from a Squarespace background, this is an amazing deal. We'd be looking at three to four times this price just for one hosting plan. There's also a huge feature list, so whether you want to host WordPress websites or use the Hostinger website builder, which includes an AI builder as well. If we jump into the Add to the Car option, we only need a 12-month contract to get the price at £3.99 per month. If we jump onto the 48-month option, we can have further savings. If you're looking to host multiple websites for four years at £167.52, that is an amazing option, saving £552. And if you're unsure as to whether the Hustinger website builder can do what you need, our Hustinger Box of Tricks course covers everything to get up and running with this website builder platform. Just be sure to use the Pixel Haze 10 discount code and the link in the description. That'll help us to continue to create free content. Back to the video. So a corporate footer section, but this brand font, just adds that playful element to it without being too risky in terms of the corporate structure. So I'm not sure someone like David Carson would look at this and appreciate this as really pushing the bar. He might find it a bit safe, but I think it gets a decent balance. One thing that's really interesting is that there is no hero unit at all. So we've gone from one extreme with having this hero slider to having no hero whatsoever and going straight into the grid blocks, all of which have a huge amount of information. Each of these could be a billboard in themselves. Of all of them, this is probably my preference. It just comes across a little bit clearer. Nice use of the photography and the color palette. And it's got that 70s retro vibe, which I really like, especially when you go all in with it. And you can certainly say that's what Burger King have done here. They've gone all in with that style. Just to back that up, I just did a quick search for 70s retro. And we can see loads of examples in here. This stops short of the muted rainbow stripes that we can see coming across in a lot of 70s style. But the color palette is definitely picked up from that and the font as well. So two famous fonts from the era of Motown, Northern Soul, etc. We have this playful, rounded font, font showing freedom of expression. And we've got the vinyl lines, almost like the Adidas striped coming into the 80s. So we've got those two types of fonts that we could play with. And Burger King have gone all in on that playful, expressive font. It's easy to read. It's bold. It really stands out on the page. And let's have a look at a couple of other pages just to wrap up. Okay, so we jump onto the menu. We've got a very simple hero or heading. It's not really even a hero unit. It's just a page title in a band. And you're getting straight into the content. Minimalist, a startup or small business, you may not be able to get away with this because it doesn't have enough of your keywords in the content. We need to give Google a little more information. With Burger King, there'll be so many links coming into the site and it's already an established brand that that alone will give it enough clout for Google for any Burger King related searches. So they're working in a different world to I am and where you were probably at at the moment. One thing I really like here is the colored backgrounds for the products. So it's all really clear, easy to read. We can see some branding and then the typography is just all fitting in. So I feel this gets a balance of bringing the brand through, having a degree of creativity, but still having that simple UX through the site. This is easy to navigate. It's easy to find the section that you want. And I really like the typography done here with the wave or the fish effect. It just draws me in straight away for a billboard. I probably only need that and the logo. And even then, I could probably guess that that was Burger King, not McDonald's because of the branding, especially if you were to go for the brand background for that one. So each of these signpost graphics would work as an individual billboard with just a little bit of extra work. That means that when combined, they follow a theme, but also are strong enough to stand out on their own. Simple, but effective photography done to a high level. Then we have further signposting, both the submenu across the top here. I like how they've used the images with the submenu from Steve Krieg, where he says, don't make me think in his book. That's what we've got here. We're not having to think about the navigation because essentially I don't even need to read the words to know that that's drinks and a lot of these burgers, for example. Now, obviously there'll be some items on this menu that'll be very similar. We have to provide a little bit more attention, but we're able to partition off the different categories easier by having the images in place. Then if we go into an individual product page, we can see that consistency. There's that brown band that was used for the page heading. Bold call not to use that same effect here, but I really like the way that the image overlaps that band and the section below. And then we've got the content below. Just to wrap up, I feel that Burger King are really taking it back to basics, tied it in with the overall look and feel of the brand. I'd be really interested to know why they just went with this four grid tile. It's definitely a conscious decision made by the company, the amount of data they would have. So it's not for me with no data to back myself up to say that this is the wrong decision. I'd just be really interested to find why they went with that and why they dropped the hero unit. Also, there's no discussion about what Burger King is, but that's understandable. So that's enough from me. Hope you enjoyed. I want to do more of these videos over the coming weeks with different brands. In the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts and if there are any brand websites that you'd like me to tackle. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.